An ebb and flow hydro table is one of the easiest ways to automate your grow and get explosive growth, even in a small space. But if you don't control your environment, all of that extra water can wreck your humidity and throw your whole grow off track. Today I'm setting up an ebb and flow system in a 2x4 tent, showing you exactly how to build it step by step, breaking down the pros and cons of hydro, and I'm going to give you some pro tips that will keep any grow environment in check. So if you're thinking about going hydro, or you just want to take your grow setup to the next level, then you're in the right place. because this might change the way you grow. So I've spent about eight years working in commercial cultivation facilities and growing at home, testing all kinds of different setups. And over the years, I've helped thousands of home growers start their first grow with my Beginner's Grow Guide series. But now we're stepping it up and taking all of that grow knowledge even further. And if you've been thinking about hydroponics, a ebb and flow system or a flood and drain table is one of the easiest ways to get started. So let's break it all down and look at how this works. An ebb and flow system might sound complicated, but at its core, it's just a few very simple parts. There's a water pump to move water from the reservoir to the plants, a plastic tote as a reservoir, a wire shelving unit as a sturdy table, a flood tray that holds the plants, and a little bit of tubing and some flood and drain valves that control the water flow. Water from the reservoir gets it's pushed up into the tray by the water pump and the water floods the entire grow tray and that soaks the roots of all of the plants sitting in this grow tray. Then after a certain amount of time it automatically drains back down to the reservoir. It's fully automated, there's no hand watering and there's perfect oxygenation between flood cycles. But how do you build this? Let's go step by step and let me show you how this all comes together. So at the heart of it all is this small water pump and this digital timer. These parts are gonna make the entire flood and drain system fully automated. Then there's the reservoir. This reservoir is just a 14 gallon plastic tote from the hardware store. These are affordable, they're easy to work with, and they hold plenty of water. And these can be adjusted depending on whatever size tent or whatever size grow space you have. This one was just the perfect size to fit under my table and it held just enough water for what I needed. Next is the table. And for my table, I just have a wire shelving unit that sits over the reservoir. And I only use like the bottom three feet of it. And I zip tied some PVC pipes to the very top just to widen it a little bit to help stabilize the flood table when it goes on top. Then there's the flood tray. I'm using a four by two flood tray, which is the perfect size for my tent. But this flood tray I have has these nice built-in drain grooves that direct the water flow right to the drain holes. So now that everything is in place, all we have to do is get the water from the reservoir pumped up into the table. And then we have to give it a hose for it to drain from the table and go back into the reservoir and it's just gonna go in a circle. So the first step is we gotta do some drilling. I drilled holes in both sides of the lid of the reservoir for the flood and drain hoses. I also added these little rubber grommets, which are super common in hydro systems, just to give me a really nice seal around my water hose so there's no light or air leaks. Then I had to drill holes in the flood tray. Again, this gets a hole in the far left side and the far right side, and this is where our water will come in and out of the table. Next, we have to install the flood and drain valves. And even though these are called valves, if you look through the middle of them, it's really just an empty tube. It's really just a hole for water to come in and out, but they're sized perfectly for you to slip on your water hoses, so these are important. These valves have little rubber grommets to keep them watertight, and you can just screw them on with your hands, and that's good enough. And after that, all that's left is hooking up your rubber hose. One hose goes from the drain valve to the reservoir, and one hose goes from the pump to the fill valve. You can see on the way to my fill valve, I have a couple of 90 degree angles, just to keep my hose from like getting bent and kinked, but you don't have to do all of this. As long as it has a nice flow from the table to the pump, that's fine. And I did throw a big air stone in this reservoir too, just to aerate my water and give me some bubbles in there and help mix the nutrients. And when I say big, I use like a really big air stone. If you compare it to the little ones they send with the air pump, the one I'm using looks huge. But all you do with the air stone is just throw it in the reservoir and it just bubbles the water. It's very simple. And it's really important that we use black tubing for all of this for our water line and our air line. This black tubing is going to block light and prevent algae growth. Like you can see in this clear air line, there's just some really nasty stuff growing in there because some moisture got in there and then the light got to it. So black hoses are always best. And this setup is super simple. After you get it up and running, it basically just takes care of itself. But with putting it together, there are like a few specific things you need to get and you need to do. So if you want to build this yourself, 
I did make a step-by-step -step breakdown with all the little details like the little pieces and all the little steps to take and how to avoid some common mistakes. And I put it over on thestrainshow.com. So check the link in the description because I laid all of this out to make things a little easier for you so you don't have to guess your way through it. And once it's set up, this is how it works. The water pump sits underwater in the very bottom of our water reservoir. This is plugged into a timer that tells it when to come on and when to turn off. When the timer comes on, this is our flood cycle. The water pump now forces water up through the hose and into the flood tray. And as the tray begins to fill with water, any plants that are sitting in the tray now get submerged in this water and nutrient solution. And this water continues to rise and rise and rise until it gets to the drain valve. When the water level finally reaches the height of the drain valve, it can now pour over the top and into that hole where it goes right back into the reservoir and starts the cycle over again. But this system is really simple and it's really efficient and that's why you see it in huge commercial grow spaces they use this technique to grow all kinds of stuff but it can also work really good right here in my little 2x410 at home and I can get the same kind of results we get in big commercial facilities and there's some pros and some cons to a flood and drain table so let's look at both for the pros first there's faster growth because your plants get nutrients directly to the roots you also need less grow medium because you don't need any heavy soil bags just some hydrogen pellets are some rock wool cubes. There's also automation. There's no hand watering at all. You just set your flood cycles and let the system do all the work for you. And there's also very consistent feeding. So your plants are always getting the same feeding at the same time and they're always getting plenty of oxygen right to their roots. But what about the cons? Because there are a few downsides and the first is just that this system is going to require some monitoring. You're going to need to check your pH and your EC pretty much every day in a hydroponic system. There's also the potential for leaks. If you set this up wrong, water can flood the wrong part of your grow room. You could have 20 gallons of water leak out all into your room and you don't want that. But the real concern that I had with this setup before I got it all going was the humidity. Cause I'm gonna need some major humidity control for this system. Because all of this water in the tent is gonna evaporate really quickly, which can really throw off my VPD. And setting up our environment is extra important in a grow space like this, because like most home growers, I'm just growing in a small spare bedroom. This room is like seven feet by seven feet. So I really only have the space for this small two by four tent. But even though this two by four tent doesn't take up much room, I'm still gonna be able to get a big harvest out of it through this flood and drain system. System. Plus we're gonna be adding in a few other things along the way to juice it up So we got some cool stuff on the way So I'm using the new Vivasun tents the 2x4 is the one I have and you've probably seen this same tent on the channel before But the old version I had I only had one little beef with it And that was that it would get just a little bit of light leaks around the zipper sometimes But now they've added little black flaps all around the zipper So now there's no more light leaks, which is very good plus the new zipper just goes like all the way around the tent So it makes assembling everything much easier Easier. And I have everything else you would expect too. I have my oscillating fans. I have the carbon filter and my exhaust fan. I'm running the 200 watt arrow light. The kitty inspected the light and he said it's nice and safe. Oh yeah, this is Elbow. He's a cat. He doesn't have hair. Elbow's gonna be our campus inspection officer through this whole grow. He's just gonna make sure everything is nice and safe and up to code. He also helped me check the clearance between my reservoir and my table. And he made sure my modifications were safe and all of my zip ties were secure. So the light passed elbows inspection and this light has something really cool right in the middle of the light that's going to help us a lot later especially in this kind of grow setup but the key to making all of this stuff work together and dialing in the perfect environment is the grow hub controller the grow hub automatically adjusts your fan speeds and your airflow and humidity and it lets you keep your tent in that perfect range to get explosive growth so we talked about the importance of temp and humidity in the beginner's grow guide, but if you really want to take this to the next level, now we have to focus on our VPD. Because if we don't have our VPD dialed in, our plants will just never grow to their full potential. VPD, our vapor pressure deficit, is a measure of how much moisture the air can still hold before it becomes fully saturated. It's the difference between the actual humidity in the air and the maximum humidity the air could hold at that certain temperature. And this directly affects how your plants breathe. And you can sort of think of this like if you were sitting outside when it was really hot. Imagine if you were outside somewhere where it was really hot and really dry like the desert. It's so dry and so hot that all of the moisture is leaving your body so fast that you just can't drink enough water 
You just can't stay hydrated. Ugh, you're just dying. You can't make it. That would be an example of like a high VPD. The water is leaving your body too fast. And then a low VPD would sort of be like the opposite. Imagine if you were in a really hot jungle where it was super, super humid. All of the sweat on your body seems to just sit there. It doesn't even evaporate to help cool you off. You're just miserable and you're just, ugh, and you're, I can't make it, I'm too humid. That would be like a low VPD. The water isn't leaving your body fast enough. And that's sort of how these plants work too. I mean, it's a little different, but now that you know that, I can explain how it works in plants. So on a plant's leaves, there are little microscopic openings called stomata. These stomata open and close, allowing your plant to breathe. When your VPD is in the right range, your stomata stay open longer, allowing your plants to absorb more CO2, which boosts their photosynthesis and fuels faster growth. This also releases excess moisture, preventing mold and rot from forming. It also is able to take in nutrients better this way, because when your plant is able to transpire water, that's what it's doing. It's pulling water from the soil or from the roots, taking it through the plant, and then transpiring the water out of the top of the leaves. And if the environment is too humid for any more water to go into it, the stomata is just going to close. That means you're not pulling up any nutrients or any water into your plants, so they're not growing very fast. When the air is too wet, stomata stay closed, slowing your CO2 absorption and photosynthesis. This can lead to weak growth, nutrient issues, and an increased risk of mold. And if your VPD is too high, meaning that your air is too dry, then your plants are going to lose water too fast. They're just pulling it up like crazy trying to keep their leaves from wilting. And they usually can't keep up, so you get wilted leaves, curled leaves, slow growth, just unhappy plants in general. Sometimes they'll even look okay. You just haven't realized that they're not really growing anymore. They're just sort of halted because of the environment. Plants grow so slow that it's hard to like, you know, look at one and say, oh, are you growing right now? And that's why controlling your VPD isn't really optional if you want those top tier results. If we want our plants to grow the fastest and strongest and the best they can, we need to get this in check. And that doesn't matter if you're growing hydro, if you're growing soil, if you're growing cocoa, this applies to all plants in any growing method in all situations. And you can see how important this is if you just look on the controller, right on the Grow Hub, it lists my temp, my humidity, and my VPD. If I look on the Grow Hub app, it also gives me my VPD right there on my app. And there's a reason they give you this information, it's because it's so important. But with controllers and apps and all of this new gear, this really isn't that hard. The controller measures the temperature and humidity constantly, giving me my VPD reading so I can see if it's in the optimal range no matter where I'm at, and it automatically adjusts my airflow so if my humidity spikes too high after a flood cycle, the inline fan just kicks in to exhaust all the extra moisture, keeping my environment just right. I got my oscillating fan in the tent that helps control any little pockets of humidity in between my plants. And this grow light I'm running has something really sick that's gonna probably help me a lot in this grow. These aero lights have a built-in fan right in the center of the grow light. And this is gonna help me move a lot of air right there in the top of my canopy, right where you're the most likely to get bud rot, especially when you're dealing with extra humidity like I am. I know that whatever I've set up, my grow tent is just gonna be that way because it's all automatic. That's what I love the most about this new grow is everything is gonna be all automatic. But none of this gear and none of the flood and drain stuff is even going to matter if we don't start off with strong seedlings. But I just found a brand new seed starting method that has changed everything for me. Not only did I get insane results, but I really put it to the test with some of the most messed up seeds I've ever seen. And the results I got were pretty crazy. You have to see this. This is going to take your seed starting game to the next level. So if you've ever had problems with seeds, don't miss this video. I'll see you there. Peace.